Good evening, Internet. As soon as that happy, I just picked him up right as he was about to clean himself. There you go, son. I'm like, brother, you don't stab me in the stomach when you jump off. So, today is the second in a three-part series of talking about things that I don't normally talk about. Specifically, the three things that you never talk about in good company with family or on the internet. The first one was politics, today's is religion, and tomorrow is sex. Why did I agree to this? I... So this is the one that I probably have the most problems talking about. Um, the third one's probably more the one that I'm more embarrassed about, but this one's the more... I have a lot of good reasons why I'm so hesitant about talking about the subject, but I'm never going to get through them unless if I actually say them. Hi, I'm Shivers, Aetherspoon. I am your friendly local humanist. What's a humanist, you might ask? Well, <clears throat> humanism is a philosophical and ethical stance that emphasizes the value and agency of human beings, individually and collectively, and generally prefers critical thinking and evidence, a la rationalism and empiricism, over established doctrine or faith. Generally, the term humanism's changed over time based off of various historical movements that have kind of pushed through this type of thing. So what's the big deal? I mean, humanism sounds okay, right? Yeah. I've been actively discriminated against for my religious viewpoints, or lack thereof, because I'm also an atheist. Flat out. I do not believe in any religion whatsoever. If you do, that's fine. A lot of people seem to think that what they see in movies and on TV or were warned about in religious classes or things like that when it comes to atheists are the way things work. Namely, they believe that I rail against religions. I want to go find the nearest church and beat the church over the head with a baseball bat. Seriously, first off, I'm a pacifist. Why in the world would I do that? And second, why is the church threatening to me? So this video is actually really hard for me to make because I have lost quite a few friends over this before and don't exactly have the approval of all of my family from it. Although I think most of them have just blocked it out of their minds rather than actually think about it, but you know, whatever. I've never been raised Christian to speak of. My parents generally left things up to me when it came to belief. I was generally raised what I would currently classify as somewhere between agnostic and deist. My mother is a fallen Catholic. My father only went to church in order to pick up women. As a result, I didn't exactly have a very strong religious upbringing. The general thought in the house was that you should feel free to believe in whatever you want to believe in. My mother called it being a free thinker, although that's not actually what a free thinker is, as I've research later on in my life. And in general, my viewpoints on the type of thing were basically, well, I was going to go to various churches. Um, I went to a lot of religious ceremonies with a lot of my friends when I was younger. A whole bunch of different varieties, although, to be fair, mostly Christianity-based and Judaism-based. I've sadly never been to a mosque or to various other religious buildings. I really wish I would have, because some of them are beautiful. And I can understand why people believe in the things that they do. I'm not going to call you an idiot for believing in a deity. I'm not going to call you a fool for believing in a divine purpose or insight or things like that. It's your own choice. And, well, this was my choice. I generally pushed my way away from agnosticism and things along that nature to more of a strict atheism when I was about... Uh, 11 or so. Generally, I mean, this was about the point where I stopped attending religious ceremonies outside of weddings and things along that nature. Uh, the last one that I actually attended was a Christmas pageant that a elderly friend of the family type of thing that actually lived right next door to my grandparents and her children went to school with my parents, well, my father and his siblings, things along that nature. And that was the first time that I had actually attended a religious ceremony where they did not try to claim that everybody that didn't follow their exact way was going to hell, or doing bad things, or not really having the answers for things. The uh, Ju Jewish ceremonies I don't really have much memory of anymore, to be honest. Part of what makes it so difficult is that my personal hero is very religious. Fred Rogers is... Um, Mr. Rogers was kind of my personal hero. I liked him quite a bit as a kid, but a lot of kids did. But at the same time, once I grew older, 
I found out more about what he was doing, what he was like outside of the, you know, Mr. Rogers neighborhood and things like that, and the more I liked him. And, well, he's a Presbyterian minister. He was very religious, but his viewpoint on religion is one that I tend to follow myself, even though I'm not religious. Namely, or everybody has things that they don't do quite right. Everybody has faults and things like that. But the important part is trying your best, not actually succeeding. And, well, I kind of take that to heart. One of the things that always bothered me when it came to being in the presence of other very religious people and partaking in their ceremonies and things like that is the concept of free will. Um, a lot of Christian religions argue heavily in both directions when it comes to that, whether we have a predestination type of thing, whether we actually have free will, whether a deity is generally starts us in a position and then lets us have free will to go from that position and so on. And that whole thing is a mess to me. It's one of the things that kind of defined my personal viewpoints on things. Namely, when I were would go up to a minister or a preacher or a person of faith in the organization and ask them, why do we have free will? What is free will? Do we have free will? Questions along that nature. I never actually really got an answer. To be fair, since then, I actually have had an answer to that that I consider satisfactory. And maybe if I would have heard that when I was seven or something like that, maybe I'd be following more of a Unitarian religion or things like that. But some part of me really wishes that I was religious. It would be comforting to know that there's something after death. It would be nice to know that, well, not everything is because it's supposed to be easy. Not everything, part of life is supposed to be hard and things like that. And yeah, no, my brain goes, yeah, there's nothing after death. I want to avoid death at all costs. That's part of the reason why I'm a pacifist for that matter. I can't knowingly harm somebody and potentially lead them to their death because there's nothing past that to me. Life is kind of important to me. The weird thing about me is that I'm actually very knowledgeable about religions, not in-depth usually or anything like that, just religion in general. And one of the reasons is that I'm really interested in mythology. And do you know what mythology really is? It's other people's religions. Greek mythology is, uh, is ancient Greek religion, uh, Norse mythology is ancient Norse religion, and so on. And I consider Christianity having Christian mythology. So I actually find things really interesting when it comes to stuff like that. And I actually have read the Bible cover to cover, or one of the English translations of it. To be quite honest, it's been so long, I'm not actually sure which translation. So my general beliefs are basically, I do not enforce my opinion upon others, and I do not expect others to enforce their opinion on me. Now, if I'm going to an event where, or even just to somebody's house, and they bow their heads for grace or things like that, I'd participate. I mean, it's not going to hurt me any, and I'm in their home, I'm in their society, their structure, I should follow their rules. It's part of being a proper guest in my mind. I'm not going to go against that. But at the same time, if somebody were to come to my house and immediately tell me, oh, by the way, you need to go bow your head for grace, I would look at them strange and say, no, I mean, this is my house. These are my rules. If they want to bow their head for themselves, that's perfectly fine. But you're not going to make me do it because, well, this is my house. And that tends to be also the reason why I'm very very, very strongly against religion in schools. The idea is that a school is a public location. It's not a private location. Well, I'm talking public schools here, but a school is a public location. As such, there's a, many different people with many different varieties of faiths, whether they be various sects of Christianity, whether they be various sects of abramatic religions. It sounds like I said sects instead of sects. Stupid accent. Whether it is Shintoism, whether it is Hinduism, or anything whatsoever. Everybody has their own viewpoint on things. Heck, you can get two people that are the same religion in the room and they probably have something religious based that they don't agree on. That's kind of the way people are. Everybody has their own opinions on things. I kind of said that yesterday. With all of that, you're not going to get a consensus. So no matter what, if you hold a religious viewpoint and present that in schools as, you know, this is the way we do things, you are enforcing your religion upon somebody else. And that I consider wrong. Morally. I would consider it wrong for, say, a Roman Catholic to enforce their viewpoints upon the church to a Protestant. I consider it wrong for somebody who is of the Muslim faith to enforce their religious viewpoints upon somebody of the Hindu faith. It's a reason why I don't go around trying to convince people, yeah, you should renounce your deities and, you know, get rid of your Bible and stuff. Why would I do that? 
That doesn't make any sense. That's completely logical in my mind, and this is where I start getting into trouble with my belief structure. And I've sort of mentioned this before, I have been discriminated against for my religious beliefs. And I, to be honest, I am making a very slight risk by making this video. It is actually illegal in the United States to discriminate against somebody who does not have a faith. It is only illegal to discriminate on a government basis or on, you know, public spaces or things like that between faiths. I mean, heck, there's been a president within my lifetime. I was alive when they were president that specifically said that atheists were not Americans. Seriously. I'm not joking. Uh, I'll put the reference down in the link below. It was um, George Herbert Walker Bush, if I remember correctly. <sighs> I'm really nervous about this. I'm sure you can tell from my body language. I'm not standing the same way I normally do. I'm a bit antsy. Keep doing things with my hands. Keep holding them like this, or holding them like this, or putting them in my pocket. And it, this is a very uncomfortable thing for me to talk about. It's something I don't like talking about in general. I have no problems with discussing religious beliefs, I find them very interesting, like I said. I mean, um, a lot of people that are, say, for instance, Episcopalian find Roman mythology very interesting. That's, they're not believing in Roman myth myths or anything like that, they just find the source material interesting, and I find Christianity very interesting, I find Judaism interesting, I find Islam very interesting. Some of those things are very strange. Did you know that the Prophet Muhammad is a cat person? Not joking. There, there's even a probably apocryphal tale about the fact that he cut his own cloak rather than disturb a sleeping cat that was sleeping on top of him. It's awesome. It's little things like that that really interest me because it shows the viewpoints of the people that were writing the material. Whether you believe they're divinely inspired or mortally inspired or some combination thereof, it's really interesting. And, well, that's generally the way I view religion. If you view religion differently, that's fine. I have no problems with that. If you believe that the world was created by, you know, a flying spaghetti monster and somewhere in the end times you will be sent to a land of stripper poles, well, be my guest. I don't particularly care. If you believe that nothing happens when you die and you are, in fact, ended at that point in time, that's fine too. If you believe that you're reincarnated, that's fine, which I also find really interesting. I'm an atheist. A secular humanist, to be specific, I am strongly, strongly supportive of human endeavors when it comes to, you know, collaborative efforts, helping the other person, things like that. You'd find that if we didn't actually get into specific religious arguments or things like that, I tend to agree quite a bit with some very religious people, mostly because I agree with a lot of the general principles when you remove the religious aspects, like, for instance, helping your fellow person, um, doing good, leading by example, things like that. Those are the things that I consider very important. Again, I mentioned um, Fred Rogers was my hero. A lot of the things that he liked to do, I also like to do. And I view that as very important. As mentioned before, I'm really nervous and I'm speaking rather rapidly sometimes. And oh, I'm probably going to piss people off with this. So yeah, now you know more about me, whether you liked it or not. Please don't hate me. I'm serious. Please.